I'm getting your mojo working today, man. That sounds great. Sounds all right. Big sounds today, Dan. Big sounds today. Hey, guys. Welcome to That Pedal Show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. Welcome. So, back after holidays. Yeah, we're, just, we're back in the saddle. Just said we, we, we've taken like forever to set up this morning. And uh, yeah, back in the saddle. It's the first video back after we've been doing our respective holidaying. I'm exhausted. <laughs> He's saying, so how's your holiday, mate? He's like, yeah, glad to be back at work. I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 kind yeah. of, kind of. As if this was work. Yes, of course. So what I thought we'd have a look at today, I um, recently was setting up a couple of boards with some DL4s on them. <laughs> and not to get into the name drop horn too quickly, but when uh, I did the Ed O'Brien board for the Radiohead tour, <laughs> right, um, we tried a bunch of things for his his looper pedal. Mm. He's so used to the, to the DL4 and the way it worked that that ended up going back on the board. And I've never owned a DL4, believe it or not. So I wanted to, obviously I ran out and bought one. <laughs> And um, I wanted to have a look because the DL4 has been out since 2000, right? It's 16 years old and they still make them. Yes, that was the surprising bit yeah. for me because Dan said, oh, we should, we should do something on the DL4. I was like, really? They still make it? And they do. I they think I've had three yeah, over right. the years and kind of got one when they first came out, really loved it. And then for whatever reason, sold it and then got another one and then did the same. Um, very much a definer of its time in terms of delay pedals. Definitely. it's It was the start of a new breed. Yeah. So I thought we'd have a look at the start of the new breed and then the new breed, Yeah. as it were. And what's happened since then? Yeah, sure. So basically the the DL4 is, it's all digital. Okay, so it digitizes everything, including the direct signal. And then models. Um, it was the first delay pedal to, to have you know, models of a tape delay, a memory man, um, you know, all loads of different things, like a, a 2290, I think they call them 2290, but you know, yeah. that sort of digital delay. Yeah. And it was really cool because you could, you know, basically whatever delays you liked, you could find a sound that sort of approximated. And I'll say approximated because the reality is when you put them side by side with the real thing, sure. it's an approximation, but it's great. Yeah. You know, if you don't want to lug around a couple of EP3s with you to a gig, you know, and it's I think very cool. It, it's always interesting. Hindsight and retrospect is always interesting because you think, yeah, of course you'd have three delays on your board. Why wouldn't you? Now, then, it's like, what? You'd have more than one delay on your of board? Course. Yeah, yeah. And there we are. You've got, you had three at your feet, programmable. Okay, it was quite big, but... Pedal boards weren't then what they are now. Yeah. Um, and it definitely had a sound, didn't it? It definitely has a sound. So, you know, let's have a look. So we're basically um, overdrive to pedal today is the Capo Diem. We're using the Lone Star and the Hampstead together. And so this is the, oh, well, if you want to have Schwang with the, the okay, sound. Okay, I'll just see where I am. I was having a conversation just before we started this video where I love, love, love playing this guitar, but the old neck whip thing a is... A couple of chords in. ...can be challenging. <laughs> With the telly, because of course I'm any. Every time, man. What's that carpe diem into the two amps? Yeah. There's just, just uh, we will get onto delay pedals in a minute, but there's just something about the sort of we're, we're forever telling people to carve a bit of bass out when you're playing solos, and you know, just be careful of the bottom end. But the bottom end is is colossal, isn't it? That's it. So good, it's so good. Nothing okay. wrong with that, as we no, say. No, no, huge. Right, so we'll start with the DL4. So basically, the first sound that everyone knows is this preset number one. Mm. 
modulated a little bit with some crunch on the repeats there. The crunch, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So sort of a memory man esque thing. Yeah. But then when people stepped on the second preset and got Which is this sweeping filter, filter on the um, it's like whoa cool again you know a little bit of hindsight is is useful here because now we think yeah that's a completely normal sound of course but when that Back came then, out man absolutely whoa what's absolutely that? and of course this was the one <laughs> So, I didn't know what was coming then until he until he played the first note and nothing happened and I thought, ah, oh, this is a reverse delay. There you go. Very cool. It's very cool. Loads of fun. Loads of fun. And of course, um, like we're just going to briefly stop on all these things because we could, can't go into them with too much detail. It will take forever. But the great thing about this is it included a looper. Oh, yeah. So you could have a looper. And it's sort of back in 2000... There was a, um, you know, basically you had not a, not the huge variety of loopers that you have today. I think you had like the the boomerang looper was one that was out then. It wasn't really happening, was it? No, I mean, it, it wasn't. wasn't until people had been doing looping. I think didn't Michael Hedges do some looping, acoustic guitar player, mm. um, and various people had done looping, but mm. it was it was probably Katie Tunster, wasn't it? She was a Big a big part, part of, of that, and then it started happening on the kind of um, acoustic singer-songwriter yeah. scene where people would use them to accompany themselves, and then there were the kind of stunt loopers mm. who did all that If you haven't stuff. seen Katie Tunstall do her looping thing, there's some amazing stuff on... Black Horse and the Cherry Tree is the one, is it? Yeah, she, yes. Uh, she did it on the Jules Holland yeah. thing, and check it out because it's awesome. And again, I can't remember seeing anybody on live TV doing... I mean, yes, Les Paul had done sound, sound on sound recording back in the 50s, but this was not that. This was yeah, yeah. modern looping. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, Ed Sheeran Bought and stuff. loads of other people who've done looping since. Yeah. So it was a, you know, it was a groundbreaking thing. I think it was, you know, it was a risk for them. And as anyone who brings up something that no one had done before. Yeah. Um, but it, you know, it took off and it's become a staple on loads of people's boards. So... You know, it sounds it it sounds great. Um, we'll do a little bit of comparison in a bit. Okay, so after the DL4, then the Time Factor from Eventide came out. Now, what I really like about the Eventide is that you have two separate delays that you can mix. Oh, okay. okay. So if I so if I go delicts of A and B, A time and then the B time if I leave the B to one to um then I have the feedback on A and the feedback on B. Ah so the one right there. Don't do that. So, a really good demonstration there. I find this pedal really confusing <laughs> to use, okay? You'll notice that I'm still here, not offering to help. <laughs> um, so, here we go, half. Oh. One that. Okay, so there's our, there's our two delay times, right? Are they always synced? Well, you can, yeah, so basically you sync them up via subdivisions. Yeah. Okay. So we have, you know, we've got the, the one eight. And if you haven't watched it, there is a Subdivision Basics video. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. Watch that one. So, so you've got feedback, um, delay times, you know, and then you've got your depth and speed for the modulation. Um, you've got, again, so this is the first time we saw that, you know, like all of the different sort of delays that you can have. And yeah, the classic the, delays. The classic delays. And then, again, on the 
time factor, we have the digital delay, vintage delay, tape echo. Um, so, but that idea of the two delays. It's really thick. I know that um, Peter Stroud, this is his, the delay he, he uses. Oh, he is loves it? it? Okay. He loves it. Peter Stroud, definitely he deserves one of these. Plays for Shell Crow. Because Dan does his board. Yeah. There we are. Well, yeah, well, he, yeah, he uses that stuff and um, just what a guitar player. Yes. Far out, man. Uh, so, in comparison to the, the, while the DL4 had three presets that you could choose on board, many mm -hmm. more sounds, of course, but mm -hmm. three instantly available presets, you couldn't mix two delays at once. Right. Which you can here. Yes. So there we go. There's a huge step forward among other yeah, and then you've got the, you know, obviously the, the filtering. And do modulation. Those, those are just the sounds, aren't they, where you can just... Job, there's loads of modulation on it. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like you're just doing that all the way along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just wavering in and out of tune there. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. We're on the edge today. Um, let's try. So, this is a vintage delay. <laughs> Very cool. So another, you know, it sounds great, lots of stuff. Then we went to the timeline, basically. The Strymon came out in, I think it was, was it 2000 and, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say 2008, 2009? Could be, I remember being sat in a hotel room at NAMM when they were going, hey, look at this, it's new. Right. Shh. Don't tell anyone. Right. So, do you remember the damage control units? Yep. 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 So, same guys that designed that. So the company sort of. Yeah. Became Strymon. Now, this was, um, and again, the time factor also has a lever in it, so you can see the correlation to the timeline, which also has a lever in it, which is really cool. The timeline has got the, the analog through. Yeah, so if we rewind right back, a lot of W's and R's there to get around. Remember, people, it's the first show back. <laughs> We're kind of awake. Um, rewinding back to the to the DL4, yeah. one of its great strong suits, but also a great criticism, was that it kind of always sounded like it did. Yes. Because it? it seemed to have this particular sound yep. that you could never quite get rid of mm -hmm. however that was the sound that really defined it so mm -hmm. you know you listen to Bill Frizzell and it was, it was on so many records when it came out yep. and it just gave that kind of warmthy cloaky hug around everything yeah. and you couldn't the thing is you couldn't really get rid of it no whereas, whereas so what the timeline does it keeps the dry path it keeps the analog signal you know the, the direct path is analog so, like for example, with you're here, when I turn the, the timeline on, the direct sound doesn't change. All that happens is. Play a sec. That 
that's the thing. Can we just do that with the DL4? Sure, yeah. What, yeah. what would we, we'd, we'd need to get a delay? Just, okay, there's the... So it's just an eight here. It's subtle when you hear it in that environment, mm. but there's no doubt that having the the DL4 in the signal chain, even with I turn as you can hear, I turn the wet sound off. Mm -hmm. It 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 brings what I can only call a confusion okay. to the sound, and I used to really notice it with mine, which is why I stopped using it. Right, because I'd be have a sound that I was really happy with playing really loud, and of course all of these things become more apparent the louder you play. Mm -hmm. And it was there was just something that I couldn't explain at the time, largely because I hadn't met you probably, <laughs> that um, that is now easier to explain. And I think that's what it is. I think because of that hundred percent ADDA yep. conversion. Yeah. I don't know. Is there a? Would you say there's even a, the tiniest bit of latency or something? Well, there has to be. Okay. You know, the, 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 to do the conversion, there has to be latency, and that's. It's not something that you necessarily hear, but you do feel it. Yeah. You know, um, but I mean, saying that, it hasn't stopped it from being no, no. such a great sounding, you know, it's like the digital stuff today is really good. Yeah. You know, and if it works for you, fantastic. For me, even just the knowledge that I've got, like from my guitar, no matter what effects I'm using, there's always an analog through signal going to yeah. the amplifier. It helps. Yeah. But when you hear, you know, we did the same thing with the with the, with the Strymon, turn the mix down. I hope it comes across as clearly uh, on the audio for this video as it does here in the room, I mean, it's imperceptible. Yeah. Whereas this, the difference with the Line 6 was very perceptible. Yes. Perceivable. And so what the the timeline does is it has that mixer circuit in and it just mixes the digitized, because the delay is still digital, yeah. it mixes that on top of the signal. So... <laughs> just it, it, fabulous and I think it, sorry just to cut in there but I, if you think about the context in which Dan and I spend most of our playing lives and the things that we enjoy so you're a great advocate of you'll avoid loops if you ever can mm -hmm. um, because you like the sound of good analog drives and stuff going into a decent valve amp and as in I, I'll avoid effects loops whenever I can you're saying yeah yeah yes, yeah sorry avoid yeah. effects loops yeah yeah um, so keeping that integrity within all of the other pedals into a great amp. That's important because it, it Absolutely critical. The, in the integrity of the guitar, because again, yep. we tend to use fairly vintage type guitars. Low output, yeah. you know, the, you know you, where you can hear the wood. So, you know, I I'm, haven't gone through all this to then say, okay, now I'm gonna stick everything through a yeah. AD converter. And that's, that could be a failing on my part because, um, it's just something mentally for me that sort of, it's a little box unticked. Yeah. You know. And quite possibly if you were into very kind of out there, wild, extremely affected guitar tones mm -hmm. with crazy high gain amps and whatever those guitars are that don't, that aren't these. Um, <laughs> no, you know what I mean, like, like a modern guitar. Right. If you were into that, then I guess that's all part of the sound and it's all part of the vibe and all the rest of it. So it would matter less to you. Yes, of so course. It's really just of to course. say the brackets of, you know, we, we and come from fairly traditional tones that we really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they're the things that, that inspire us. They're yeah, the traditional that, guitars. Yeah, yeah. Valve amps. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those are the brackets. Sure. Within which this conversation takes place. <laughs> sure. 
Um, yeah, so the timeline, and again, you know, we have all the different ends of the timeline. If you, if you, um, there's so many demos out on the timeline. It's become, I think, I think it is the most successful delay pedal of, of all time. Right. You know, or if it's not, it's there's there's something about this that is the most successful like, ever. It's it's you know, yeah. It's amazing. Um, and there's you know you can see it on most of the stuff that we do, um, but there are. If we have a look at um, you know you, dual pattern thing, so one's like a slap back, one's a. You know, crazy stuff. The ice thing is always awesome. So it's like an auto hold, is it? Some, so, something in there is... Yeah, well, well it actually, it's adding a harmony okay. on top of the delay. So now we're not only filtering the delay, we're actually adding things to it. Yeah. Um, the tremolo is, if I can find a tremolo preset here. Um, sorry, give me two seconds. You can See, while, while he's doing that, he um, Dan was saying that he finds the eventide hard to use, largely because he spent so much time with the timeline. It's exactly right. It's about time spent. You yeah. Know, if, there, if you've spent this the amount of time that I've spent with this on that, you'd just be going, I was, you're, you're an idiot. I was doing some victory videos recently. I thought I'd take along the timeline because, uh, you know, I could get any sound I want out of it. Oh my God! <laughs> like about half an hour later of going, arr, 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 <laughs> sending text messages to him going, help. It, the, the, it's not hard. It's not hard. <laughs> you just have to learn it. It's exactly. And once you've learned it, it's easy. It's regardless like, of which pedal. It's like jazz. <laughs> So jazz is hard. This is this is um, the tremolo. The delay has a tremolo on it. That is such a cool sound. It's beautiful. That's it one of those beautiful. sounds. Beautiful. You get going on Monday, and by about Wednesday, you're like, "Yeah, this is cool sound." <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, when I first started playing with it, I was instantly inspired, a by the sound, but by just all these wonderful, creative sounds. Mm. Just, just awesome. Okay, now I wanted to have a look at this one as well. So this is the Pictronics Ecolution Two. There's another one. There's the Filter Pro Two that's come out since this, um, but. Where do Pigtronics come from? They're American? They're American. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dave Coltai, I believe is how you pronounce his name. Um, yeah. Cool guy, you know, great stuff. What I love about this pedal is, and I think this is the Pigtronics, so uh, again, analog three signal, but the filter section on this is outrageous. Yep. So. <laughs> standard thing but then if I go to So Dan's Beautiful. a huge fan of the Electro Harmonics Electric Mistress. Electric Mistress. Yeah, which was on his Desert Island pedal board. And those filtery sounds really appeal to you, don't they? They do. Great is that? So that's a step filter. Yeah. It's amazing. The so when we're talking about delay, we are essentially what we're talking about is how the delay sound is treated. That is the the key to having these wonderful sound delays. 
The um, things like the Echoplex, though, there is something in the preamp that also changed the sound. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's um, what we're looking at today is just having those, the delay sounds. You know, we're not trying to sound like an Echoplex or anything. We're looking at keeping this sounding like it is and then having these wonderful delay sounds on top. Yeah, and so one would you, assume you've got those filtering things in, in the time factor and in the timeline as well. You, you do, to a point, but not to this level. You know, so it's really the Echolutions thing? It, it is the Echolutions thing. Those, yeah. sort of, those sort of filtering f stuff is oh, it's, it's wonderful. And, I mean, sonically, I think it sounds absolutely gorgeous. Mm, because it's got a well-sorted analog drive-through. Yeah, yeah, well, there's that, but also the actual sound of the delay itself right. is beautiful. A really, really high-quality um, digital processor. Um, and, you know, it does its proper stereo... Uh, you have, you know, you've got the, the dual line thing as well. Um, so, if so the, so the dual line thing as well, if I go through here, I press and hold that, that adds a second delay signal. Which is, I believe, here. We're in radio headland again. We are. Not that that's on there at all, but no. hey. Yeah. So, so good. Makes you want to play angular stuff, doesn't it? It makes it does want to play. I mean, let's try something nice. Endless fun. It is so much fun. A real so writing tool fun. as well, isn't it? It's not the kind of thing you're going to go, okay, uh, my solo in Shine On Your Crazy Diamond is coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So what? So the, the timeline and the evolution, um, you know, for me personally, uh, as I started to get creative with delay sounds, you know, digging deeper into those two, just joyous, mm. just joyous. Um, so from there, I've got you know the two more things I wanted to show. So obviously um, the H9, and we'll we'll do more on this than the H9 as well. We're going to have a look at some. Um, we've been asked to do multi effects. Now we're not going to do multi effects in the traditional sense, but I do want to have a look at like the H9, the M5, um, a couple of the units that are a good workhorse. You know, instead of having to take. 30,000 pedals to a session with you, you know, something that might do... Probably in the context of the new Keeley workstations as well, yes. because that, there we're seeing a multi-effect trend that's Man. very interesting to pedal users. He's, the stuff that he's brought out yeah, yeah. in the last couple of years, is yeah. so, so on it, yeah. so good. So yeah, so we will have a look at this and the other things in, in more detail. Um, but what I liked about this is that the deep editing function with the H9 is done with an app. Yeah. So it, what happens with the H9, we're moving away from actually getting our hands dirty here yeah. and actually getting a, you know, an iOS or an Android device and actually editing the sounds that way. And it sounds good, so... One thing about the H9 again, though there is no analog drive through. Yeah, it's all it's all digital. But it's you know the digital processing 
you know, from these things, is in a different league than what was happening in 2000. Sure. You know? Big step forward from big that. Ste- yeah, big step forward. Um, and there are loads of guys that use these and absolutely love them because they're so flexible. There's so much stuff in here, you know. It, this is a generalisation, but I, the, if you were going to look at the good players that I know who use Strymon and the players that I know who use Eventide mm-hmm. as a very, and you need to be careful here, but a lot of the guys I know that choose Eventide tend to go for the more out there sounds, a right. bit more experimental, mm-hmm. the more kind of, I don't know, and I often see them in loops, mm-hmm. much more regularly see mm-hmm. them in loops, mm-hmm. whereas I often see Strymon's in the front end yep. going for sort of more, I wouldn't say traditional sounds, but even though both pedals can clearly do both things, of course. There just seems to be a almost like a brand thing with Eventide that pushes it in that direction. Yeah. Maybe it's I don't know. Maybe it's a hangover t- from S- Steve Vai and using his harmonizers and all of that. Maybe. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a huge part of that of world. Yeah, and again, yeah. like I say, it's a generalization, so don't need twenty thousand comments going. Yeah. Hang on a minute. I use an H nine. But. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're great. Um, you know, but I think I, w- I want to include this just just to show that app thing. Yeah. You know. And just how the the interface has changed now, how we've progressed from going, oh wow, I have got so many buttons on this pedal here, yep. to actually having an app. And let's be honest, Dan, why aren't we showing the app now? Because I can show the app now if you like. No, because you're the same as me. Because you go, ah, it hasn't connected, God, ah, and you spend twenty minutes doing that. For the first three weeks of owning it, yeah, and at that point, it's the simplest thing you've ever done, and you wonder how you ever live without of it. Of course, of course. But it's just if you don't use this this stuff every day, and you're not au fait with it, it's just yeah. I mean, you can so you can alter things on the pedal. So this is the the play here. Um, I can alter the feedback. Yeah. So X, Y, and Z are three different X, parameters. Yeah. Yeah. Mix, I turn the mix down a bit. Yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah. It's what, all... re- what really surprised me about the H9 when it first came out is that it had all this iOS um, compatibility and everything. And uh, I remember the, the source distribution that was distributing Eventide at the time, may still be doing it, I don't know, sent me one to a long term test for the magazine. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hang on a minute, it only does one thing at once. Yeah. To have all that stuff in there and yeah, yeah. What you know that, that for, for for what I was looking for at the time, which was a Swiss Army knife pedal, which of course, if you get it set up right, and presumably it's MIDI controllable, is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah, you can MIDI switch stuff. it. So you could you can select different engines at different times. Yeah. But at that point, you could because uh, sorry, just to recap for anyone who doesn't know, the H nine contains time factor, mod factor, space factor. No, sorry, time factor, max factor. factor. <laughs> Back to 30 for your Greek holidays. It contains a bunch of Eventide pedals all in one. It's the time factor, the mod factor, the space, um, the pitch factor. So it does all that yeah. stuff too. Well, it's, well, they're all in there. That's another show for another day. Yeah, yeah. I do <laughs> think, though, it sounds different than the, yeah. the the big box time factor. So there is a lot in there, isn't there? But there's an um, there's an enormous amount in there. And we should say that since then, um, there is a max version. The max factor. The, the max factor, that's what they should have called it. Um, which does, d- you, so you can have tremolo and reverb. Yeah, and well you can have a couple of things. There's a couple, there are certain engines that have two things going on together. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, now, I wanted to finish off we are going to be doing looking at this in more detail. This is the tone of recall uh, from Chase This Audio. Um, my mate Joel Corty that we hung out with in at Nam. Did we? Year. We did. Well, we, sorry, you about, were, we, sorry about that, Joel. Yeah, it was at breakfast time. You uh, still still half, half asleep uh, <laughs> from the chicken and waffles the night before. Um, so, uh, but just the coolest guy. Now, what I love about this pedal, uh, it has the ability to store presets. And you know it has also has MIDI in it as well, but it is all done. Hey, yes. So it uses this little separate MIDI controller in here. You have to have a little adapter for it. MIDI via jack. MIDI via jack. Tap tempo, all that stuff. Right. And it's analog. 
So does that mean you could set it up off a, off, off you off G two for example, so that it would just switch with everything yeah. else? Yeah. Wow. It's amazing. And sonically. <laughs> Then, so you get into the modulation stuff here and it's just absolutely gorgeous. You can change the shape of the wave and the modulation. A bit more volume, mate. A bit more volume on that one. That went from kind of squarer to smoother. Yes. It's a triangle wave, square wave. Short delay times. So oh, anyway, anyway, it's so, so it doesn't seek to emulate in the way that these others no, do. No, it's got not emulating. It is its own thing. It uses. Um, so they reissued the memory man chips, the M and three double O fives, which are in the eleven hundred TT. Which is in the eleven hundred TT. Yeah. Look at you. Um, so they reissued those. I only know that because you said it about eight times yeah, know, in videos first. They reissued those and. He's used those in this pedal, but it does so much stuff. I mean, this will this will scare you. But if you look at this on the back, it has all these dip switches, yeah! right? So that you can set up any of these. For, um, anyone, for anyone that doesn't know, if it's got more than about four knobs online, then... but you can set up any of the knobs to be to be controlled by an expression pedal, or you can actually have um, any of the knobs controlled via the rate control. So so different combinations of the dip switches. To make all these weird and crazy wonderful sounds. So it's as, my, as my dad would say, it's just one more thing to go wrong. <laughs> right. <laughs> when electric windows came out on cars, is it just one more thing to go wrong? What you need is a handle, so. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, wicked. Anyway, <laughs> but it's, it's fantastic that, uh, you know, I just wanted to show all the other pedals are digital. Yeah. That is, it's a, what he calls a digital heart, sorry, an analog heart with a digital brain. Yes. Right. So it's very, very cool. That's kind of the goal. That's that's the holy place, isn't it, for yeah, lots yeah. of pedal designers these days? Yeah. Difficult to do. Yeah. Difficult. To and do. It, if if you could say it has a sound, does it sound like an analog delay? Does it sound like the ARDX twenty? Does it sound like a Memory Man? Uh, it definitely has its own thing. I think it's it's a tad warmer. Yeah. The nose. Can we just hear it on some clean, maybe some clean yeah, sounds? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have a play, you have a mess around. So yes, it does all that stuff. The it's yeah. great. I, lo I love that about analog delays, the way you get that really crunchy, crazy, silly business. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. very cool. So, you know, just a different, it does all the digital stuff, the MIDI stuff, the presets and stuff, but to do it all with analog? Yeah. So cool. So really not the pedal if you want to, if you want to emulate an old um, 
Echoplex or a 2290 or yeah. a, you know whatever. Um, it's these, a, these others are the way to go with yeah, that. Of course, but if you're if as a creative yeah. tool, uh, and you don't mind messing around with dip switches and you know, fantastic, fantastic. So I think you know as far as the legacy of the DL4 is concerned, it's it's just personally, um, there's certainly pedals on this board that I don't think would exist without the DL4. Absolutely, because before that it was it was a rack, wasn't it? That's right. And then you had to get into all that business with line level loops and oh my goodness, what a struggle that was. Uh, and MIDI switching and all that kind of stuff that some stroke many guitarists just cannot get around. Sure. And then this comes along and things have changed. Yeah. 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 Actually, we should also say that uh, dear old George Tripps had a hand in that. Oh, George Tripps. So George Tripps, who works for Way Huge uh, and Dunlop. Mm. Um, George... Oh, he designed. He was the, the designer owner of, of Way Huge, wasn't he? He is yeah, still, still the owner of Way sorry. Huge. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, but he also works for, for Dunlop and MXR. And George had a hand in the in the way the Line Six sounded. Mm. Um, he also designed the uh, uh, Aquapus. Yes. Way Huge Aquapus. The Red Llama. The MXR carbon copy. Yes, the carbon copy. Anyway, George, George has been involved in lots and lots of really cool things, but yeah. his great uh, ears, great designer. He's got ace ears. <laughs> you should come on the show one day, George. If you're watching, you should come on the show one day. That's the invitation, George. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there we are. A whole thing was born. Yeah. So you know what we have to do now. Oh no! I've dropped my plectrum. Get another one now, aren't I? Yeah, you know what too expensive these are. Um, right, so we know what we have to do now. Cheers, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you next week. Cheerio. Bye.